We are here to tell the NFL there is no honor in a racial slur. It is time to change the mascot. The word redskin is an old word that means a lot of negative things to uh, me and my children and our people. And if you look at the Native American culture, they rank really high in problems with domestic violence, alcoholism, divorce. They have bigger problems on their plate than the name of the football team. My goal in life is to share our stories, to entertain and educate the world about who we are. I am a father. I'm a mother. I am indigenous. I am insanely dedicated. I am indigenous. I am indestructible. I am international. And I'm indigenous. I am indigenous. I am indigenous. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Let's get right to the gist of it. Why is it offensive? It's a dictionary defined racial slur. There's no way you can honor a people by using a slur against them. It's a dictionary defined slur and it meant proof of Indian kill. It was a bounty. So they would use it in advertising. They would say a fresh red skin and that means scalps. So let's say that there was a dead Native American. They would take the scalp and they would sell it and they would say I have a fresh red skin kill. We've been dehumanized. And this is an attempt for people to recognize the indigenous people of today. The indigenous peoples survived westward expansion. We survived the founding fathers. We survived all these people of history standing between us and our inalienable rights. We're here and we're not gonna take this dehumanization any longer. That's right. Using a racial slur with a graphic violent history isn't just disrespectful, it's morally inexcusable. The mascot robs young American Indians of their self-esteem and invades their dreams. I strongly support our sisters and brothers protesting in Minnesota this weekend, and I stand with them. This is a statement from Billy Mills, an Olympic gold medalist from Pine Ridge, South Dakota, who has inspired generations of natives and many others. We are proud to be sovereign Indian nations. We are proud to be Minnesota Vikings fans, but we are not mascots. A few years ago, the Shakopee Dakota people gave the gift to the University of Minnesota. It was the largest financial gift the U of M has ever received. It was used to build a stadium. Later today, inside those walls, the most degrading word for Native people in the English language will be used over and over and over again. But I can promise you this. Here in Minnesota, in the heart of Indian country, in the land of the 11 sovereign Indian nations, this word will not be celebrated inside and not be tolerated outside. But not everyone agrees or understands the importance of this issue. They're a franchise in a private business. Yeah, the Redskins have made a choice to go down that road and, and stay the Redskins. They should respect that. And really, the Redskins, I mean, it's about bravery. It's been a symbol for 80 years. Did you know that word was used to describe Native people or their scalps as proof of their kill? It may mean that to them, it doesn't mean that to us. But we buy this jersey because it's part of the NFL. Just because someone comes up to you and they say, I approve of the use of it, I don't mind, that doesn't change the definition. Just because you approve of a racial slur doesn't make it any less of a racial slur. Suicide is the second leading cause of death for Native Americans ages 15 to 34. There is empirical demonstrable proof of the detriments of mascots on those kids. So what we are doing is fighting for the health and well-being of our kids. What does the Washington team name mean to you? I think it's like offensive because I don't really think they know what the word redskin means. And maybe if they knew what the word redskin means, they would try to change it. Tell people, what does it mean? It's like when people would scalp the natives, like the, the blood on the scalp that they had, that'd be like the red skin. But we're not red, we're brown. How is it going to honor us? The people that support it as football fans, I don't think it's, it's a big enough game. I don't think it's a big enough thing in life that you can't look past it. Our campaign for respect will defeat the NFL's racism, and a movement for decency will triumph with the power of the people. Well, I think it's the most uh, degrading name in sports history. The most horrific, and uh, 
I'm just happy to be a part of this coalition. Being a role model, being an Olympian and, and a former hockey player, you know, an athlete, you, you have to step up. And, and I think this is one of the areas that we need to address as Indian people. Do you mind touching a little bit about the history of this movement? Well, for me, uh, what happened is we lived near a town called Cooperstown, which was named after James Fenimore Cooper. The local high school had the same name, and they, on their own initiative, decided that they wanted to change the name because it was so offensive. After having two close friends that I met at a summer school program, we were from the Navajo Reservation in Arizona. And at one point, I had to tell them um, that our mascot was the Redskins. Um, and, and that really affected me. That was, that was difficult, and they were offended. Um, and it was embarrassing. We actually paid the school the cost to change the name. Those kids were so inspiring that students who could do something that the billionaire team owners and the billionaire NFL would not do or refuse to do, but gave us hope that in this generation there was that America might live up to the ideals that it speaks about, about equality and mutual respect. Today you can see a broad coalition of political leaders, representatives, media that represents a diverse voice in this country and the NFL and Dan Snyder needs to listen to America. And I think he will be willing to do this. He's a smart guy. He's one of the 32 billionaire owners of the, of the NFL. So. That enlightenment will show through. Now somebody asked me, uh, as recent as yesterday, does this matter? It does matter. We have elders who have lived their lives preserving our language and our culture. They are not mascots. We have children who want to grow up and be proud of who they are. They are not mascots. And we have more women actively serving in the military than any other group in America. They are not mascots. I am a proud Anishinaabe woman. I am a grandmother. I am a tribal leader. I am not a mascot. People are going to say, well, aren't there bigger issues in Indian country? Mascots are a symptom of the condition and the condition is the dehumanization of Native Americans, of indigenous people. We are not mascots. We are human beings. We're citizens. We may be your doctor, your lawyer, your professor, your neighbor. So watch your mouth. Next, on Indigenous with Stacy Thunder. And they're off. He's Billy Mills of the United States is in there, a man no one expects to win this particular event. Billy Mills, Billy Mills, pouring on the steam. Billy Mills is really putting it on. Billy Mills has the lead for the United States heading towards the finish line. Olympic legend, Billy Mills. <laughs> 